In this tutorial, we'll cover downloading or exporting Google Sheet documents to a number of file types. I'll also highlight a few gotchas too to look out for. So why might you need to download or export your Google Sheets? One, you may need to share with users who are not using Google Sheets, or you may need to provide raw data for uploading on various services that require certain formats. You may also need to provide an uneditable presentation in say, PDF format. Whatever the reason, Google Sheets provides a number of downloads formats to meet your needs. Let's look at how to do it. It's really quite simple. Go up to the File tab and scroll down until you see Downloads. Here you'll see six different download formats. The first two download formats are very similar. The Microsoft Excel, Excel SX format and the Open Document ODS format. These are probably the most commonly used formats in spreadsheet design outside of the Google Sheets realm. So let's have a look at those two first. We'll download the Microsoft Excel format, but keep in mind the ODS format is relatively similar. Let's get started. Back to our main screen, we have our Google Sheet, which contains three sheet tabs. This one, this one, and this one. Let's go back to the main one. Down the bottom here, you'll also notice a little graph. Okay, back to our download, File, Downloads, and Microsoft Excel. Once we have this, we'll go to our folder, and we will open as an Excel document. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got our two documents. I'll move this screen over a little bit to the right and close out the downloads file so we can see some changes. Pretty much everything is similar, but you can see some minor format changes here with the student grades. If I scroll down, you can see here one of the fonts is a little bit different. This looks like an Arial font where it says Merriweather, but over in our Google Sheets, you can see it has slightly different formatting. You can also see that where the student's header is a little bit grayed out. In ours, we're using the alternate color format, which uh, darkens the header bar, but it doesn't darken on this one. Only the following alternate colors are covered. But let's go down and see if there's a difference with our graph. I'll scroll down a little bit here, click over, okay. There we go. So same. Make this a bit bigger so we can see. You also notice a difference with our graphs here. On the left hand side here for Google Sheets, you can see that the legend is on the top bar. And then on the right in the Excel document, it has been transformed to be on the right hand side. There's a few things like that you need to keep an eye out for. Also, you'll notice that the number gradations on the graph is slightly different too. So make sure you keep an eye out for those. You'll very rarely get a identical image downloaded from a Google Sheet into an Excel or ODS document. A couple other things are different too. So if I click on this function issues, you can see here I'm using a special function called import range. So there's a number of functions in the Google Sheets that do not carry across to a Microsoft Excel or ODS format. And this is one of those. A couple others might include array formulas, or for example, Google Translate or Google Finance uh, functions as well. So this is our import range back in our Google Sheets. Let's see how it looks on our Google Excel document. Let's move over to it. And you can see that the import range is still there and visible. So you or your users can see what was there previously. But, and you can see here that there's a dummy function. Now this is basically a housekeeping function that allows us to see that the import range was drawn in and what the values were. So you can reference them, but it's not actually working as expected in the Excel document. Um, it, all it is doing now is simply pasting what was there previously uh, with those values. Another issue you might come across is the way we handle arrays in Google Sheets. For Google Sheets, what we do is use curly braces and then the location. So this is C2 to C8, which is over on this document here. Uh, C2 to C8 is the range we selected. And then over here, we've got the results of this range and they're inside these curly brackets. Uh, the ODS or the Excel format do not take this and they will come up again uh, with a, a sample of what's going on, but it won't necessarily read the document. It won't change dynamically. All right, let's move on. Let's go back to file, download. So we've covered Microsoft Excel and the ODS format, which is essentially almost the same. Let's go to the PDF document. If we click on this, what it'll do is take us to a printing page, which will send us off to print the document as a PDF. You may have done this you know, in the past with other documents. So just like any normal print, you have a set of options on the right hand side from which you can choose a number of export tops. First, we could choose the current sheet, 
which is uh, this input range here, or we can choose the entire workbook, or we can choose the selected cell. So I haven't got a selected cell here. Let's try an example. Let's go back to here, and let's say I want to select the, the title, the header, and the first three rows. And we'll go back to File, Download, PDF Document, and we've got our current sheet here, and then we've got our workbook, which is all the parts in our workbook. And then finally, we've got a selected cell, which is like this. We'll discuss more of this in the next tutorial on printing. So once this is done, you click on export and the document will download. And now if I open it, you'll see you have a PDF in the format required. Okay, let's close this one down and move on to the next format. So the next format is to export as a web page. Let's go to file, download, web page. Okay, you can see down here, this is downloading a zipped file. So if we click on this and show in folder, you'll see I have a zip file here in my Windows uh, 10 drive. And being Windows 10, I can open this up and actually run the files inside. Now there's a CSV HTML, function issues HTML, and XLSX and ODS HTML. And these three HTML files are the same as the three tabs down the bottom of the page. So if I click one, they will replicate the same appearance on the page. So if I click on SLX and ODS, which is our main one, it'll come out with our list. There's a slight difference to the formatting here. You can see the columns across and the rows down, but it is essentially looking the same. Also, you can probably see that the chart didn't come across with it either, which is a bit of a problem. Let's go back to the file. There's a list of resources in here, and these hold a JavaScript that is involved in displaying these three pages now, and also the CSS for styling those three pages. Okay, so let's look at the last two formats. Let's go to File, Download, and we have comma separated values and tab separated values. Now, these files are used for when you upload data to a particular program. For example, in the past, I've used a learning management system called Moodle, and it requires a comma separated value or tab separated values to upload uh, grade results into the software system. So these are much better suited to data uploads than something like, say, a Microsoft Excel or Open Document format where there's other tabs that may not have the data that you need for your upload. Let's have a look at these. I've got a CSV file here. We'll click on this CSV file first, and then we'll go to File, Download, and let's click Comma Separated Value. Now, essentially, Comma Separated Value and Tab Separated Value are the same. So we'll click on this, and it'll download, and you have yourself a CSV file. If we open it and show in folder, and then I will right-click and open with, let's say, a we'll go with Notepad. Let's move this over here. Let's close this. As you can see, we have across the top the ID, uh, math and basic science as the headers, and then the data separated by column all the way down. Again, the tab separated value is essentially the same. Let's do this, download and tab separated value. And we should just be able to click on this. Yeah. And again, you can see here that this time it is separated by the tab button, and we've got a header across the top and each item on the way down. To be perfectly honest, I've never used a tab separated value to upload data into any sort of software or database, but I often use the CSV files. That's usually my bread and butter for uploading. That's all there is to exporting or downloading your Google Sheet. If you liked the tutorial, please click the like button. And if you want to subscribe, please do so. I'll catch you in the next one.